approaching the graveyard sector. such ferocity and viciousness. There's something incredibly primal about what he does as Voldemort. When he popped up and he was very fleet of foot, he was like a dancer. He plays it with a lightness and a mercurialness and a sort of sensuality. There's attractiveness about it, although he looks like some weird mixture of reptile and sort of broken fallen angel, doesn't he? Fate, Harry. That's what brought us together 13 years ago. The hard thing is, he's really a personification of, quote, evil, which I think is impossible to play. I mean, you want to feel there's a living mind and a brain behind any of these so-called villains. Where I start from is the idea of love is repulsive to Voldemort. You can't help thinking that he's been cheated of it. So therefore it becomes a thing to despise and to, and to destroy. When dear, sweet Lily Potter gave her life for her only son, she provided the ultimate protection. I could not touch him. It would be easy for Voldemort to become this kind of archetypal bad guy, but Rafe imbues him with some very scary corners. He wasn't just a block of ice. You could see that there were an enormous number of things that were going on uh, just under the surface with him. You can't play the whole scene on one note, so you've got to look for the little gradations and nuances. So you try things. How lies have fed your love? Do you know where you're standing? Do you know where you're standing? In trying them, stuff happens. It gets more fluid. It gets more fluent, I suppose. More fully inhabited. No matter. Things have changed. <laughs> I can touch you! Now! Mike Newell was quite keen that we didn't deny the moments of overt visceral rage and a sort of ecstatic rage and a delight, in a way, a sort of sadistic delight in the power he's got. Have ah, I, Harry! I think you can sometimes cheat yourself and the character and indeed the audience of those kind of red-blooded moments at the same time. I'm trying to find a balance. Mike just said, don't go all subtle on me. Let me see a few moments of uh, craziness. I didn't want to talk to Rafe that much simply because I know that I'm not a good enough actor. Um, to actually be talking and then suddenly have to turn around and pretend that he's my worst enemy. 1073, take two. Oh. B camera, A on the end. Maybe in 10, 20 years I might be able to do that, but I now I know that I can't. Pick up your one, Potter. So I didn't want to get into big conversations with him just, you know, before we were doing takes and things. Don't you turn your back on me, Harry Potter! I want you to look at me when I kill you! I want to see the light leave your eyes! That's, the, I think, the most focused the set has ever been on all four films. There was a real sense that the last three films and everything we've done in the fourth film up to this point, it's all building up to this scene, to this confrontation with Voldemort. This is not only what a lot of the Wizarding World have been waiting for, it's also what the audiences have been waiting for. Let's go! So I think we all felt quite a big sense of responsibility. Very good, very good, very good. Uh, once again, right away. 